Welcome back to another episode of Tuna Racing. On today's episode, we'll change out the factory injectors for some aftermarket injectors, and I'll show you how we do that. Normally, only change the injectors out when you're going to an aftermarket ECU. Uh, size your injectors depending on your horsepower goals and um, fuel you're using. Um, I tend to use the Bosch thousands because they're stainless steel injector. They are on the big side if you're staying on 98 and only aiming for that 300, 350 horsepower. Um, but inevitably, everybody always wants more power. So, you know, future proofing. Thousands will get you almost 500 on E85, uh, which is normally where most people kind of want to go with these things. So it's a good uh, starting point. So your factory injector is a 11 mil top and a Toyota Square Shank 16 mil lower. Now most aftermarket injectors don't actually allow for that 16 mil Square Shank uh, O-ring because it's wider than the normal 14 mil that come on them. Uh, so there's normally a little uh, step, I guess, uh, that inhibits that from fitting. Some people will stack O-rings on top of one another and whatnot. Uh, but you can convert the head to take a 14 mil lower o-ring uh, injector by removing the Bakelite cups and fitting uh, a insert. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. So obviously to get in there, we're going to pull all our intercooler piping off um, and unplug our injectors. Okay, so to get in there, I'm just going to drop the throttle cable off. Just trying to give myself as much room as I can and also make it as obvious as possible as what I'm doing. So I'm actually going to pull the, rot the throttle body off. Uh, you don't have to, but... It will give us a lot more room. So, only four... Well, two bolts, two nuts. Um, I'm only going to lay it up over the top here so I don't have to undo my water lines. Uh, so two electrical connectors, one for the idle air control, one for the TPS. Back hose on top, bottle cable's already off. So now we can see the rail a lot easier. Um, so we've got our return line here that you would have put on when you did your rising rate fuel rig. Feed in here, two 12 mil headed bolts that hold the rail down and four injector plugs. So we're gonna undo those. So that's 22 mil underneath the dampener here. It's a banjo bolt, so don't lose the copper uh, copper washers on there uh, and then either take the whole fitting out or take the hose off Okay, so now that that's all I'm done, I'm gonna unplug my injectors. 
because there's a good chance the injectors might come out with the rail. All four injectors are unplugged. Lift the rail, there you go, three. Three came out. So you can see the 16 mil square shank O-ring on the bottom of that one. That one and that one have stayed in the Bakelite cup and the whole injector stayed in on that one. Okay, so you can see the Bakelite cups in the head there. Uh, so as I said, that one there, that one there, the 16 mil O-ring has stayed in. That one there, it's come out of. So if we're really lucky, you can just twist these and pull them out. So they have an O-ring about halfway down uh, on the outside of that Bakelite cup sealing into the head. Normally they'll be pretty stuck in there, but if you're lucky, that's how they come out. If they don't come out like that, I'll show you what I normally do. The first thing I'm gonna try is just giving them a little grab and twist. See if they move. Pretty unlikely that they will, but. Mm -hmm. No, none of those are going to move. Okay, so what we need to do is actually crack the Bakelite out of the way. We'll crack it in half at about the O-ring height, uh, and then we can pull it out in pieces. So I've got a big screwdriver, hammer, and I've got my shop vac here. Got that because I don't want any pieces going down into the engine. I'm going to set that up. see that I've cracked the Bakelite cup about halfway along. Now that I've done that, should be able to get The rest of it out. So you can see the o ring just on the top there. So that's basically what's holding it in. So if you can crack it at the height of that o ring, you can take the pressure off that and pull it out. Alright, so now we'll try that again. The next one. Our cup. With a smaller screwdriver. It's just the 16 mil airing. This one's breaking the pieces. <laughs> Oh, 
And again, there's the next piece down. So I, again, I always like to use the shop vac in case any little pieces break off. Uh, they'll get sucked up before they fall into the motor. It is pretty easy. Like when that's down in the head, I'm putting my screwdriver in under that O-ring and just prizing it out. It's pretty easy for a little section to break off. So um, even using circlet pliers, using anything like that, that little sections break off. So if you have your shop back on and already facing in there, um, you can sort of save it before it falls down there. So that's two done. I'll keep going, I'll get the others done. All right, so now the Bakelite cups are all out. So now I'm just gonna clean those holes up with a little bit of Carby Clean um brake clean degreaser whatever uh and probably just a soft scour pad just to get rid of that gum there so i'm going to do that with my shop back on so try and avoid anything falling down inside the the head there Okay, so that's our factory injector. Uh, you can see the thousands are an extended tip. Uh, so there is enough room in the 3RZ head for that to sit down in uh, without the need for an adapter. Uh, there is an adapter that you can get to move this O-ring down to here, uh, which will obviously make the injector longer. Uh, but then because we've got an 11 mil factory rail, injectors too long um, the shortest adapter that you can get to convert it to an 11 mil is there so then you'd end up spacing the rail up which isn't an issue but this does work this way uh, this is another injector that i like to use uh, in the bigger horsepower builds it's a 1650 cc injector also uh, a stainless injector uh, you can see between the O-rings, it's the same length, uh, but the tip will sit up higher. Uh, so that means the fitment is the same. So basically, these fit into the head, and then the injector will sit down into it. Uh, and then we'll need our short 14 to 11 uh, adapter, which these are available through most race products stores. So... Raceworks, Aeroflow, um, any of those. So that becomes what will take the place of this here. Uh, so you can see that the tip doesn't actually end up much lower. Um, so it won't interfere with anything. It is, however, lower than the factory injector. So that will sit lower. So this is our factory rail. So to have these three quarter length injectors fit uh, with this adapter without the need to space the rail up. Uh, what we do is we take this out of the bottom of the rail. Uh, they can be tight sometimes, you might need to use multi-grip for something. Uh, and we will use a shorter or a fully threaded bolt, because that's a shanked bolt. So we'll use a bolt uh, that doesn't have that shanks. And that will sit directly down onto the head. Um, one consideration is that that plug will sit quite close to the manifold. So sometimes you will need to just turn the injector, but what you should end up with is the injector in there nice and firm, uh, no real up and down movement, but still relatively easy to rotate. Um, and that's about the right tension on it. So we'll chuck those in now. So if you're fitting the 1650 or three quarter length injector, that's not an extended tip, it fits the same way. Obviously bottom end into the adapter, 14 to 11 mil on the top, remove the spacer, bolts down all the same. If you're running a full length uh, injector with these adapters, you'll need to space the rail here. So you can use washers if you want or aluminium spacers from, from an engineering shop pretty easy to get, but as I said, you just want that injector to sit in with no up and down movement. 
uh, but easy enough to twist. So with a very light smear of grease on the O-rings, These adapters, available on tuneracing.au. We'll push straight into the head. Okay, so that's my injectors in the rail. The rail will now sit down onto the head. I've got my fully threaded bolts here. Make sure they're all lined up in the holes. A little push. All right, so I can still turn the injector pretty freely. There's no up and down movement, and that's what we're looking for. That's what we want. All right. As I said, this clearance is a bit tight. So depending on the plug that you use, you might need to turn the injector either forward or back to give you a bit more clearance under there. Uh, so we'll put our fuel lines back on and then we've just got to do the wiring. Okay, so I'm going to cut all of the injector plugs off. Uh, they pretty much will only reach their corresponding injector anyway, but if you need to mark them, mark them. They're all going to have a power wire, which is black with a red tray. They're sequential injection, so there is a separate trigger wire for each individual injector. Um, so if you need to, you can check a schematic to see which one's which. Polarity of 99% of injectors doesn't matter, or I always obviously make them all four the same, but it doesn't actually matter which way you put that. Um, so these are my EV1 injector plugs uh, or pigtails. I'm pretty sure you can buy these already made, but I just put 100 odd mil, 150 mil of wire into plugs I already had. Um, if you don't have the tool to do it though, the crimping tool, you're probably best to buy pigtails. Already got my heat shrink on there. I've pinned all four the same way. Um, so obviously red is my power and white is my trigger. And finally just put everything back together and injectors are in. Next up, ECU.